first lecture is on linear equations. We'd like to be able to identify linear equations, and we'd like to be able to solve linear equations as well. So what is a linear equation? A linear equation is, in one variable, is an equation that could be put into a form like this. So ax plus b is equal to c, where a, b, and c are constants, and a is not equal to 0. And in this situation, the variable is x, but this can change, and we'll see examples of that. The reason that we don't want a um, to be 0 is, in that case, you would just have a constant equation, and it's not nearly as interesting as a linear equation. So uh, also, it might not necessarily be true. But here are some basic examples. So 2x plus 1 equals 3 is already in this form, where a is 2, b is 1, and c is 3. Negative 4x is equal to 1. This is already in this form as well, where b is 0. Uh, x equals 5 is another example, as well as 2x plus uh, 1 third equals 0. So this has to be able to be put into this form to be considered a linear equation in one variable. And in, again, in this situation, the variable is x. So this is what's going to vary. OK, so what we would like to do with equations such as this is we'd like to solve them. So a solution set for an equation is a set of all numbers that if you replace x um, uh, with these numbers, then you'll actually get a true statement. So for example, uh, let's show that x equals minus 2 is a solution to this linear equation right here. So to show that, all we'd have to do is just substitute this in for the, uh, the x right here. OK, so uh, if I substitute this in, uh, minus 4 uh, times minus 2 plus 3 equals 11. And you can s simplify this pretty quickly. 8 plus 3 equals 11. And uh, yes. OK. Um, now here's another example. Here we have an equation, and we'd like to solve this, figure out what the x values that would solve this equation. OK, so a uh, basic strategy here would be to use the distributive property and uh, combine like terms, essentially. So first, let's uh, distribute in this minus 4 into these two. So we'll have minus 4x. Uh, and then plus uh, minus 12, after we do that multiplication, plus 2, and then let's distribute this 5 as well. So that will give us 5x minus 5 uh, plus 4. And then simplifying this, we'll have minus 4x minus 10. So adding these two together, uh, then we'll have 5x, and adding these two, we'll have minus 1. And at this point, we're just going to combine like terms. So it, the choice is really up to you. But let's bring the x terms to this side and bring the constant terms to this side. So the way that we'll do that is we'll add 4x to both sides of this equation. right? So if we add 4x over here and add 4x over here, we'll end up with just this minus 10, because here we'll get 0. But then over here, we're going to get uh, 9x minus 1. And then to get rid of what we can do is just bring this constant term over here. We can add 1 to both sides of the equation. And then we'll have, um, let me write it over here. So we'll have uh, minus 9 equals 9x. And then at this point, in order to isolate the x, because remember we're trying to solve for this x, if x is being multiplied by 9 and we're trying to isolate this, what we're going to have to do is divide by 9. So we'll divide both sides by 9. Remember, whatever you do to one side of an equation, you want to do to the other side so it remains a valid equation. So we'll have minus 1 equals x. And then this would be our solution. So the solution set for this equation would just contain the value x equals one, negative 1. OK. All right, well, what about uh, this equation here? So 
of this equation, a um, little bit, a little bit less uh, extreme than the one that we just saw, but uh, we have four terms here, and let's combine like terms. So um, maybe we'll bring the x's to the the right and the constants over here. So first, let's add two x, both sides. We'll be left with the 5 on the left, and on this side we'll have 5x plus 1. Okay, and then we'll bring this constant term over here. So in order to do that, the we'll have to subtract 1. So we'll be left with 4 equals 5x. And then to get our x isolated, we'll have to divide by 5. So we'll divide by 5, and this will be our answer. So 4 fifths is our x. So our solution set would just contain that one fraction, four-fifths. OK. So here's another equation. And this one has a bunch of fractions. And one strategy that you can do in a situation like this is you could try to get rid of all the fractions at the beginning by multiplying by uh, a common denominator. The best choice would be the least common denominator. Um, which in this case uh, would be 12, right? So if we multiply by 12, so we're effectively going to multiply the left and right side by 12. What what will happen is we'll no longer have fractions. So uh, if I multiply 12 in this one half, we'll get 6x. And if I multiply 12 by this one fourth, we will have 3. And 12 times a third, we'll have 4x. And 12 times the 5 fourths, the 4 will reduce. And we'll have 3 times 5, which is 15. Right. And then at this point, we'll want to isolate the x term, uh, x terms by on one side and the constant terms on the other. So it, maybe in this case, we'll bring the x terms over here. So if I want to bring this 4x to the side, we'll have to subtract by 4x. And we'll be left with 2x plus 3 equals 15. You could actually do multiple steps at once if, you, if you'd like. Uh, and we'll subtract the 3 over here. To get 2x equals 12, and then we'll divide by 2 to get our solution. So the left hand side will be an x, we'll have that isolated, but now this is equal to just 6. So there's our solution. Okay, and here is a, another equation, but in this situation we have uh, the variable y. Same procedure is going to follow, but uh, just note that the variable could be could be different. But this is still a a linear equation. In the end, this is going to be a linear equation. But uh, with practice, you'd see that this has to be linear. Um, okay, so the strategy first, we're going to distribute to kind of expand all our terms out. So we'll distribute the six, and we will have six y minus eighteen minus 5y plus, and then we'll distribute. Remember, you're distributing this minus 5. So you want to be careful and make sure that when you distribute, you're distributing the signs. You know, over here, we didn't have to worry about that. But with the minus 5, this is going to distribute, and we'll get uh, minus 10 here. OK. And at this point, You'd want to simplify both sides before we do any action to both sides of the equation. So um, we'll combine like terms. So you see the 6y and the minus 5y. We can combine those together to just get us uh, a single y. And we can combine the minus 18 with the minus 10 to give us minus 28. And at this point, we really just have to move this 28 over here. So if we add 28 to both sides, we will end up with y equals 
is 36. Okay. One thing to note, uh, the nice thing about this process is you could always check your answer if you wanted to. You can always substitute it back into the original and make sure that it simplifies to the correct answer. So here's another equation where the variable in this situation happens to be t. So let's see what happens. Okay, so we, we're going to distribute this to. Okay, so we will have 8t minus 2 plus 3. And we'll have the 5t plus 4 plus 3t. Okay, now before I do this, I could have combined these two terms together. But we'll do that now. Okay, so 8t and let's combine these two terms together so we'll actually have just a plus one and we'll combine the t terms together to give us 8t plus four oops let me just add in there hang on a second just erase that real quick Um, and then at this point, we're going to try to isolate the t terms on one side and constant terms on the other. So let's subtract the 8t over here. Subtract the 8t. And we're, we get rid of the 8t's and we end up with 1. And over here, we end up with 4. Okay, so at this point, what happened was the t's were eliminated on both sides and we ended up with this resulting equation. However, this is not possible, right? One is not equal to four. So this right here is an equation that has no solutions, right? There's no value of t that I can substitute into this equation to make it valid because there are no t's to substitute into, right? Like for example, if I had a t plus one, then there are t, there is a t value, namely three, that would make this valid. But there are no t's here. But what we would say is just that there's no solutions, no solution. And since this equation had no solution, it's equivalent to the original equation, which says that the original equation also has no solutions. There's no value of t that you could substitute up here and make this valid. So the solution set, um, so you'd say no solution. But if you want to be technical, the solution set is what we call the empty set. So it's a set that contains no elements. There's no elements in there. So I'm not writing the number 0. That's just notation for the set with no elements. We call that the empty set. But you could just write no solution. That's perfectly fine. All right. In our last example, we have an equation in the variable of y. And we'll just follow the same strategy. There's nothing to distribute here, but uh, we have some terms that we can combine. So for example, I could combine these y terms together. We could combine these constant terms together. And we can combine these constant terms together before we do some action to both sides. So if I combine these two, the four minus the three, the four y minus the three y will just give us a y. The two plus the five will give us a seven, and the three plus the four will give us a seven, and we have this y. Now, just looking at this, you might suspect, oh, maybe something similar is going to happen to this previous example. So let's see what happens. All right. Well. We could subtract the y's, so we can get rid of the y on this side. But it is going to get rid of the y on this side. So we're left with 7 equals 7. OK, now this is different from before. Before, we had 1 equals 4, which is not possible. That's, that's impossible, right? This is not possible. which is why we say that there's no solution. But down here, well, we know that 7 equals 7 always, right? This is always true, right? 
7 is always equal to 7. So since this equation is always true, what that means is for any, vari uh, for any value of y, this equation is still going to be true. Essentially, the y's are irrelevant. So um, uh, we would say that all real numbers are a solution. Now, if you want to be technical, kind of like before, where we said up here that the solution set was the empty set, there is notation for the set of real numbers. So the solution set is this. So you have this sort of fancy version of R for real numbers. But if you just always say, um, you know, always true or all real numbers, you know, some designation like that, that's perfectly fine.